Thank you, Mr. President. It is a great honor to be here this afternoon to present my credentials to President Herzog as the 21st Ambassador of the United States to Israel. I'm humbled to have been asked by President Biden to represent my country before the State of Israel. And in the words of President Biden, it further strengthens our country's unbreakable ties. As I've said before, I cherish the opportunity to reconnect with this beautiful country, a country I came to know as a 15-year-old traveling all the way from Duluth, Minnesota. And what a special treat it is for me to have my Hebrew school teacher. Please do not test me on my Hebrew, however, but uh, thank you very much. During that time, I had the opportunity to climb Masada at 3 a.m., sleep in the Sinai Desert, and work on a kibbutz, which I actually visited this Friday, of course, after my quarantine. Mr. President, you and I share the firm commitment to security, economic prosperity, and democracy for both our nations. You have been a close friend and ally of the United States since the early days of your career. Most importantly, you came by it naturally, following the footsteps of a very impressive family. And Mr. President, an added bonus for me is I now get to work with your brother to strengthen the bonds between our countries. My agenda as ambassador will be first and foremost to reinforce our unshakable and enduring commitment to Israel's defense. And I want to take a moment to reiterate, as President Biden has said, that the United States fully supports the replenishment of the Iron Dome. We will continue to collaborate closely and advance peace and stability and to counter the threat from Iran poses to Israel and the region. And as President Biden has made it very, very clear, the United States is committed to ensuring that Iran never develops a nuclear weapon. As Ambassador, I intend to work tirelessly to further strengthen Israel's long-standing peace agreements with Egypt and Jordan, as well as to build on the great work of the Abraham Accords. President Biden and Secretary Blinken have been unequivocal in their support for these groundbreaking initiatives. We do not view normalization as a substitute, however, for Israel-Palestinian peace. Instead, we seek to harness existing and future agreements to improve the lives of Palestinians with a view to preserving the vision of a negotiated two-state solution. Ultimately, the viability of any relationship is measured by the people-to-people -people connections. On this front, I'm committed to furthering the depth and breadth of the bonds between our people. In particular, business-to-business -business relations, which are already strong thanks to our shared values of free market economy and fair competition. I will also continue this administration's work with Israel counterparts in hopes of Israel joining the visa waiver program. I look forward to working with Israel to protect the freedoms of expression, association, and peaceful assembly to reflect our shared democratic traditions, to create an atmosphere where all voices can be heard, and to highlight the efforts to advance the rights of members of vulnerable and minority communities. I will also stand up against all efforts to isolate and delegitimize Israel internationally. I will continue to work with this administration to firmly reject the BDS movement and boycott laws that unfairly single out Israel. It is abundantly clear that we have a world-class partner in President Herzog in the State of Israel to advance all facets of this relationship. The rich diversity of the people and experiences in our nations put us in good stead to reach new levels of cooperation. As we celebrate the final night of Hanukkah, I look forward to working with you, Mr. President, and the women and the men of Israel we have in common, challenges, and to work to enhance our already strong, vibrant relationship. Hag Shemeah and Toda Rabah. Thank you.